let's start by um, having you define AML for the audience. Yeah, AML, acute myeloid leukemia, it's a type of a cancer. Um, it's You can think of it as a cancer of the bone marrow. And um, it's um, uh, the uh, prob- likely result of several abnormalities or you know, sometimes I call them mistakes that can occur in stem cells or a stem cell in the bone marrow. And those mistakes that occur, most times we don't understand why they happen. Um, and, and, and we don't, um, uh, in most cases, they're completely out of a person's control. This isn't something that comes on because it runs in a family in most cases, or because of something somebody did or didn't do. These appear to be pretty random events that occur, but these mutations that occur in these sort of stem cells in the bone marrow cause a cell to become a cancer cell. And um, over the course of uh, a a variable amount of time, these can evolve and develop into, into this condition, AML. Okay, thank you for that. Health literacy, which is defined by the ability to find, understand, and use information for health-related decisions is essential. Would you expand on the term health literacy and why it's important to accessing quality AML care? Yeah, so I I think health literacy in in our field is is a challenge because these are acute conditions that come on oftentimes very quickly. And these are not uh, diseases that are top of mind. Most people don't know somebody who's had this they're not common. Only about 30,000 people every year in the United States will have uh, AML. So it's very hard to have any sort of background in this. And for most patients, because of the pace at which this disease occurs, it can be very difficult to sort of read up on it before meeting with a provider or an expert or a specialist. So there's a lot of challenges or barriers to health literacy. But, you know, like anything, the more a person knows, the more sort of empowered they can be, uh, the more ability they have to ask questions um, and, um, and, and seek care at sort of the optimal place. What I find often is that health literacy is best harnessed by a patient's uh, uh, a team. So uh, in, in other words, their support system, their family or friends, because it's so much to deal with in such a rapid succession to get this diagnosis and to usually be feeling very poorly, to also be expected to sort of have, have read uh, the, the most relevant literature and come armed with that information is often uh, a, a t- too much at the beginning. So in, in the beginning, I think it's best you know, to, to leave that to your support system. Um, and then as time goes on, and as you start treatment, get comfortable, health literacy in our field, it becomes a more prevalent um, uh, issue. Um, and, and I think that when patients learn the most about, um, you know, what is, uh, how the field has evolved and where we are, uh, you know, the, the better that they can potentially do. Mm -hmm. Well, that leads us perfectly into my next question. What resources do you suggest for boosting knowledge about AML? Yeah, Um, you know, AML is is like so many um, uh, fields in in medicine, but, but probably more so moving so quickly that, you know, sort of the usual Google search is not going to, in, in, for, in most cases, bring up the most important, the most relevant information. So, um, you know, I think that there are some organizations out there that do a really good job of uh, uh, educating patients. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is one. Um, they have a, a good website. They have people you can contact and they have really good information that's available uh, to, to patients and their families. So, um, you know, that that's where I typically uh, uh, recommend people start. And then from there, based on their interest in, you know, um, uh, education level and things like that, there can be other other resources. But I think the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is a great place to start. Yeah, okay. Newly diagnosed patients and their care partners are often overwhelmed, as you uh, mentioned earlier. What advice do you give them at their first appointment? 
Right. So, you know, this is a, a huge challenge. Anybody in this situation would be feeling like this. So first of all, you know, it's sort of like, it's okay to feel like this. It's normal. It would be uh, unnatural to not be overwhelmed with what you're going through. That's an important message. And then, you know, I think there's this period of time between diagnosis and a plan that is particularly anxiety provoking. Um, and so, you know, uh, as as your doctor and their team sort of sorts through the necessary information to get a plan together, just know that that is a very anxiety provoking time when you're being told that you have a really significant and and um, serious disease and 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 we don't have a plan yet so making sure that you sort of uh um, comfort yourself during that period knowing that that is temporary and that is potentially the worst anxiety you, were, you will feel i think can be helpful and then from there once the plan is sort of in place and enacting it it's really just focusing on like short-term goals so you know, instead of thinking um, three steps ahead and, um, you know, how's the transplant going to work uh, in the early days, focusing on, OK, how am I going to get into a remission and, and you know, how am I going to feel day to day? How can I feel as best I can day to day? What's the best path to a remission? And then, you know, once you sort of meet the goal of remission, OK, you know, what's next? How are we going to cure this? So, you know, thinking through um, sort of in short bites uh, I, I think is best. Mm -hmm. Are there other key questions that um, they should be asking their doctor or their healthcare team? Yeah, I mean, at diagnosis, depending on the situation, this is a disease that can be cured. And so, um, you know, from the first day asking, is that a possibility for me? Is there a curative plan for me? And what might that look like? I think is an important uh, question to ask from the beginning. Um, you know, making sure you communicate your goals and your wishes, how you define quality of life, what that means to you, um, you know, and, and, and in that way, you know, that can really help inform your, your, your doctor and their team to, to put together a plan that sort of is most customized to, to you. Mm -hmm.